Uh, make sure that everything's lubricated. I mean, I've had a wee bit of a job just with this blade from over the last half hour because the lugs are so seized up, it's, it's ridiculous. And it makes, just makes for harder work. And then there's nothing worse when you're trying to tune ahead and get things seated where you want, struggling with one lug that keeps on locking at one particular point, you're going, ah, stupid thing. So, you know, it's, you know, okay, it might take you about a good day to actually do your whole kit, but it's, uh, it's a maintenance thing, and it's also an investment. If you have spent $1,500 on a drum kit, you want that to last a while. If you spend three grand on a kit, you want it to last for a while, okay? You want it to be, to, to be something that will allow you to be musical and um, not inhibit your musicianship. So, spend the time, golden rule, Anywhere where there is a screw going into a lug, yeah, get the damn thing lubricated. And that includes your stands as well. So if you can't lubricate it to get it to run smoothly, then just replace that lug. If it's that it. bad, yeah. yeah. If it's you that can, bad, um, and to do that, you like you un unscrew it from the drum, yeah. and, and, and there's those little wee, uh, these little guys here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, look, see that little thing there? Yep. That, little, that pops up, well, they can be replaced. Yeah, okay. yeah, you can buy those in those little packets of things. Why don't you do the whole six? Or just the one? Well, it depends if you can get the same. If it's only one that's affecting you and giving you jip, well, then you don't need one. Yeah. And the look of your drum, you should be able to get parts for that quite easily. And, and I'll tell you a little secret. You tend to find that some of these, some of the actual parts where the actual um, screw goes into the, the actual lug itself, you find that on Tama and on Mapex and on they're virtually the same thread. Okay. So if, if, if you know if you find a second hand drum nine times out of ten, it'll actually screw into it quite happily. So you know that's why I never throw anything away. I'm like Jono. If even if the drum's munted, I'll keep it, because there are parts to it. So be a magpie guys, don't ever throw anything out. You know, one day if you get married, your wife will actually throw her hands up in the air and go, I don't know. But I tell you, as a drummer, it's always a safe way. You'll always end up using those bits and pieces. Right, now, before we even make the start, I want just to look at the concept of what a drum is. Okay, on this side, it's circular. Funny that, right? But, can anyone answer the question of what shape that is? Someone down for someone down? No, it's a rectangular. It's a square. Rectangular. Okay, so it's ten, in, it's 10 across, she's 10 down. In the 80s, they used to have power toms, which I think was 2 inches on, wasn't it? Oh, they were huge. Yeah, they were so like 10 across and around about 18 down or something <laughs> stupid like that. But, you know, generally these days with standard sizes, what she is across is what she is down. Generally. Not always time, but, yeah. In this case, square. Now, I, I believe so that... So that's actually 10 by... Nine. Is that 10 by 9? She's yeah. a bit shorter, is she? Yeah. yeah mo most things actually aren't square. You're usually oh, getting uh, 10 by 8. That might even be 10 by 8, is it? Yeah. 10 by 8. Uh, and then 10 by 9 is a bit bigger. 12 by 9 is very common. Yeah, yeah that's 12 so, uh, Because there's uh, so much more variety with kids these days. You standard know. sizes are yeah. usually 10 by 8, 12 by 9, 14 by 14, or 10 by 9, uh, sorry, 12 by 9. 13 by 10 and 16 by 16. 16 by 16, I was going to say, but that is definitely a square one. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Even yeah. though it looks rectangular, yeah. Yeah. it's an odd quite thing. But generally, if you keep that in mind, now, the, the, the most important rule for me when tuning a drum is making sure that your bearing edge is true. If your bearing edge is not true, then you might as well kick your drum out you know, and stick it to garage because you're never going to tune the damn thing at all. Unless it's a hat kit. If, you, if you've got a second kit, which is your hat kit, in other words, it's something that you throw in the back of the, the car when you're going to rehearsal, you don't really care about it at all, that's all right. But if it's your, your main kit, if you, your bearing edges aren't true, then you're going to have a lot of problems. Okay, It's just going to drive you to the, the verge of insanity. Now, let's say that we're on the same page. We've uh, put Vaseline on all our lugs. We've checked it maintenance-wise. She's all good. Everything inside with your screws. Uh, uh, screwed them properly. Oh, you know, actually, sorry, I didn't closet. mention that, but while while your heads are off, yep. I, I've got some little screwdrivers in there. I should have actually got everyone to do that, and I'm sorry, I forgot. But tightening up all those screws in there. Yeah, carry on, Kevin. Yeah, there's nothing worse than, 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 than <laughs> you've tuned it out, and you go, ding, dong, dong, ding, and you go, what the hell is that? And you think, where's that coming from? It takes you hours to work it out, this stupid light. 
or a nut inside yeah. the damn thing and it's worked itself loose and the washer's vibrating like you can take the whole head off. And so, you know, make sure that everything's screwed on properly, okay? Right now, you must do that. regardless as to what, what heads that you use, golden rules are, um, I'm assuming that we're using brand new heads. If you use an existing head, make sure that your, head, your heads are not pitted. Okay, um, can I use your head? It's a great example. <laughs> Please. It was brilliant. Please, I'm not having a go. I just think this is fantastic. This is a classic example of a head that has uh, been lovingly used. Okay, and a little bit too far gone. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, as you can see, it's been played so much that it, it, it's now, wow, well, it's stretched, hasn't it? Yeah. So, as soon as you get one or two things in like that, your head's, your head's napped. It is absolutely now. Um, and of course, there's a single fly head. Well, it looks like a single fly head. Yeah, it is. And you're a hard player, of course. Yep, you love your metal, I'm assuming. Yep. And that's probably what the reason was. You know, you're a hard player, and, and this happens after a while. As soon as you get one or two, um, you know, bumps in there, you can kiss the head goodbye. Okay, so keep that in mind. Hey, can you just have a quick talk about that being a single ply head? And I think most people have probably bought a, a double ply head. Uh, yeah. James has bought a uh, an EC2, which is double ply with like reinforcement rings. We've got a pinstripe here. Yep. Uh, We've got a what's that on? G, G1, G1 here. Um, so yeah. Basically, they come down to being called um, we call them hydraulic heads. Uh, and the concept is this: that is a double ply head. If, you, if, um, if you hold it up into the light and it's a brand new one, you'll see that there is, you get this rainbow effect when you run your finger across the damn thing. And you can see it because what that actually is is two layers, two plies with a light, a really light sprinkling. And I don't know why they did this. I'd love someone to answer the question. With a little bit of oil in between it. That's the hydraulic heads, but, but just two ply <coughs> normally don't. It's just the reflection of the light. Like no, on Remo. Hey? Emperors do. Do they really? Yeah, they oh, do. I thought they were just that. It was only when you get to the hydraulic. Because I remember having a chat to Roger on that one, mm -hmm. thinking, you know, what was the story about. It's definitely with, um, it's the, and I, I, I always use Remo. I tried Evans, but it didn't work for me, and I still use Remo all the time. But the Emperors and the Pinstripes are definitely with the oil. I cannot speak for Evans, though. That's why it's got the Not too sure. But the one thing is that with these, these so, actual yeah, heads, yeah. when you've got Super single ply, your single ply tends to be a lot more resonant. And nine times out of ten, you'll find you put them on the bottom of your drums. Uh, unless you are a very light player and you like to get a very resonant tone with your drum. The only downside to that is that you've got to be very careful with the size of your sticks and how you're striking your drum and how hard you hit. Because as you can see, you're easy to dent. Okay? Um, your, your double ply heads, whether they're Evans or Remo or whatever, they're designed so that they can take more impact and yeah, you know, they're for the heavier player. And they, I think that they give you a warm and full of sound. How do you feel on that one? Mm, I like it. Uh, they go. Yeah, they give you. They go. Doom. If you like drums, you go. rather than. Then you go for the two ply head. And, and the thing is, the difference between the two of them is that if you had a uh, single ply on top and a single ply on the bottom, and you've got the thing tuned and you hit it, the, the note will just last forever. It will just go on. Which isn't a bad thing, it's just preference, that's all. So okay, yeah, we, sorry, uh, Tim, Tim's more of a jazz player. Yep. Um, could you just talk about maybe like the kind of heads that you use? Would yeah, you use I, single plies? Yeah, or? I use I use Codits 